welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Jack Kempster, and me, Liam Underwood. In this episode, we are going to be discussing The Division, a Tom Clancy game available on PlayStation 4 and probably other formats. Yeah, Xbox One, PC. We played it on PlayStation 4. Yes, we did. But before we get to that, it's time for my favourite segment, Catching Up with Jack and Liam. Now, Liam, I have a question for you right before we start the catch yeah. up with. You sound a little bit depressed, buddy. I'm good. I think my, you sound, my... You're not You're not sounding, you know, 100% enthused. What's happening? My throat hurts a little bit. Yeah? I don't know why. You're sick. Possibly. You got, you got ill. I, I don't think so. I just, I don't know. It just, it like, it sounds weird to, in my head. Oh, okay. So, I don't know what that's all about. I think I, I'm lacking energy is the problem. I don't, I don't feel I have a lot of energy today. You need to drink some coffee. I don't like coffee. You need to drink some tea. I don't. Like, I don't like hot drinks. I'll make it easy for you. You know what? I don't like hot drinks either. Then my advice is to not drink them. I don't. Well, there you go then. What is it about hot drinks that you don't like? Out of curiosity, I'm not sure. I've never really liked the taste of coffee or tea. I find um, like I agree with you, uh, but I also find on top of that, like I never feel like I'm particularly thirst quenched after drinking a hot drink. Yeah. And if I'm going to drink, it will be. Because I'm thirsty, so yes, it seems weird to get a drink, and I'm like, well, this isn't having my desired outcome. Why would I keep drinking it? Yeah, it's also too hot, and it burns your mouth. Yeah, and then you can't taste anything for like the next half an hour. <laughs> Maybe we're not drinking it right. I find that unlikely. I mean, it's it's probably hard to drink something wrong. Although, exactly. If me and you agree on something, in this case, that hot drinks are not good. Yeah, that usually means we're right if both of us agree. I mean, I think. It's pretty fair to say any time you agree with me, I'm right. Um, and and any time you agree with me, I'm right. Any time you don't agree with me, still most of the time I'm right. Well, let's agree to disagree on that point. So what have you been up to, Liam? Um, I have been reading Preacher, book two. Oh, yeah? Now, regular listeners will know that in the last episode, we reviewed Preacher, book one. If you didn't hear that and you want to hear our thoughts, go give it a listen. We won't mind. Um, but Preacher Book 2. The thing with Preacher, right, is uh, it was it's quite a big read, as we discussed, and it was quite yeah. a, a dense story. Like, not, not too much, but a lot was going on to the point where I felt if I had too long of a gap between Book 1 and Book 2, I'd really struggle to jump back into it because I'd forget what had happened. Yeah. So I wanted to just plough straight into Book 2 and kind of keep going with the momentum and um, I'll be honest, it's it's not as good as book one. It's still fine, um, but where it's mostly different is book one had the, the three stories in it that we were discussing. Yeah, yeah. Book two, it sticks to just one story throughout. Oh, okay. And it, it's, it, the, the book is like maybe a little bit smaller than book one, but it's still like, that's a lot, a lot of pages to... That is a lot of pages to ...devote to one. one story. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like, I feel like three or four issues ago I was ready for them to start resolving this story and it just feels like they've kind of been dragging their feet a little bit it's it's not even that noticeable it's just you, you get to a stage where like right I need this to get resolved now not because it's like amazing or anything just because it's been going on long enough yeah um, but yeah still still a fine read just uh, not as good as book one so would you recommend that I read it yeah yeah okay Um, I feel like I'm, I'm going to keep on with it. I'm going to read book three next. So maybe if you're on the fence, wait until I've read book three. And then by that point, I'll give you a definitive answer. Yes, it's worth committing to two more books or, you know, it's not strong enough to put that time in. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, I've also been getting back into watching Smallville. Oh, have you? So what our Smallville listeners... Smallville hit TV series that's super popular right now. What our listeners might not know is that before we started this podcast... So we're going back a couple of months now. More than a couple. I was way into Smallville. Like, Superman yeah. was my jam, right? But then season six happened. And I, I won't go into spoilers, because, yeah, it's old, but people might might be curious. It's just season six kind of takes what is the best element of the show and just kind of benches it, almost. So the first half of season six introduces a little character called Oliver Queen. Who's he? Well... Turns out he is Arrow. Whoa! No, wrong. What? You're wrong. He's not. He's not Arrow. Who is he? He's the Green Arrow. Okay. He's the Green Arrow. Thank um, you. 
Now, the thing well, is, well, that's a surprise to me, Liam. Good. The first half of season six deals with that, and I was bored with it. I didn't care. Um, mm-hmm. The second half, he fucks off back to Star City. So yeah. now we're getting back to like they've they've taken the interest element back off the bench. So I'm like, it has taken me probably three or four months to get through the first half of season six. But now, in like the last couple of days, I've done I think four episodes. So I'm 100 percent back on board. All about Clark Kent, Lex Luthor, Chloe Sullivan. Uh, Lana Lang I don't like so much but I'm on board and also like like something that you've been waiting for for six six seasons has just happened and again I don't want to give away spoilers but oh my god it's about time that happened okay what have you been up to I've been watching TV too Liam oh yeah it's just that I'm a bit more up to date and modern so I've been watching the new DC series that are you know new and not old so like Avo and Flash and Legends of Tomorrow I haven't got to that yet. I'm watching them in Super chronological Gale. order. Are you, though? Because I thought you hadn't watched Arrow. Uh, I hadn't. I, so what I did was I got to a point in Arrow where I'd just seen like another bit of a crossover. Yeah. Because they cross Arrow and Flash crossover quite a bit. Yeah. And I decided, you know what? I need to catch up with Arrow. For fuck's sake. What? She does my head in. Why? You know why. Just because you want to... No, but see, this is the thing, right? I don't complain when you haven't done what I want you to do. Such as? So leave me be. Get Steam. It's not happening. And I've, exactly. I've got perfectly so I'm not, valid I'm reasons. I'm not going to watch The Walking Dead till you get Steam. You'll never watch The Walking Dead then. And it'll be on your head. The thing is, right, you want me to do something that I don't want to do. You don't not want to watch Walking Dead. No, but I do want to watch Arrow and Flash, and I don't want to watch Walking Dead desperately enough to not do that. That's a mistake. No, it isn't. You aren't watching the Arrow or Flash, so you don't know. You're watching Smallville. Yeah, and once I'm done with Smallville, then... I will watch uh, Arrow and Flash, and I will start watching them in chronological order because I'm smart. I, w- I w- technically I watched them in chronological order. I thought Arrow started before Flash. Yeah, and I saw I've seen I'm on series three of Arrow. Okay. Because I watched series one and two when they came out. So why didn't you stick with them? Because uh, I was watching them when I lived with my parents, and then when I moved out, I sort of fell out of all the TV stuff that I was watching with my dad. So now I'm getting back into it. Okay. But yeah, so like, so Arrow and Flash are really fucking good, and I have seen Smallville, and I think Arrow and Flash are much better. Oh, probably. That wasn't me trying to like diss you for watching Smallville. That's just, I was just saying that as a yeah. Like I'm, like, I want to watch Arrow and Flash. Um, yeah, you just have a like obsessive compulsive need to watch everything that's even remotely connected well, together that, that, in the. My my made. thing with watching Smallville, it wasn't like I didn't feel like I need to watch Smallville so I can watch those things. I just wanted to watch it because I was curious about it. But now I don't want to start like another three shows and still have Smallville on the go. Yeah. Because I feel like it's it's actually four shows because I guess Arrow, Flash, Supergirl and that Legends of Tomorrow all kind of cross over, I think. Yeah, they do. So that's There's four shows. There's also web mini series. Yeah, that's a lot to commit to when you're already watching a 10-season show. Yeah. So I was like, I want to finish Smallville first, and then I can kind of dive into it. Not because of my, like, oh, it's connected, just because there's only so many hours in a day. But you've got to admit the things being connected, that is an issue you've had in the past. Oh, yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I don't I will be... to think I'm just making that up about you. Yeah, I will be watching um, Arrow and Flash and Supergirl and all that in chronological yeah. order. I mean, you're the man that wouldn't let us watch back when we were in the uni days. You made us all come round and watch Lupin the Third, yeah, a live action Japanese film, yeah, because you in to to watch the rest of Studio Ghibli, the animated yeah. company, yeah, you had to have seen their live action spin off into a different series, which had its own set of films. So you had to watch all of them as well to make that movie make sense. Yeah, I, I honestly, I've I've still never never watched any of them. Yeah, no, because we got to Lupin the Third and we were like, what is this film? It didn't make any sense. It doesn't. It's a bad film. Um, but, you know, that's just one of my quirks that the, the, the listeners probably love about me. I mean, I don't know if they knew that about you. No, they do. They'll love it. You do, guys. You now know that about Liam. I've had to live with that knowledge for years. That terrible secret. Liam. Yeah. I've also been up to other stuff since yeah. we last recorded. Yeah, I went to visit my uni friend. Oh, okay. How was that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, what did you get up to? Went clubbing. Oh. Played some board games. What board games? Played Batman Love Letter. Did you like that? Uh, yeah, it was good. He won. Of course. Um, he cheated. So I asked Kat if we'd played it together. Yeah. And she said, 
We hadn't played Batman Love Letter together, but we have played Batman Flux together. I've definitely played Batman Love Letter with someone. But it wasn't with us. Yeah, fair enough. But what I'm more excited for you to tell the listeners about is the other game we played. Is it Camel Up? Yeah. That game is utter tripe. Would you like to embellish on that? Yeah. So, the aim of the game is to get the most money. You get money by putting little sort of bets on, either on who's going to win a round. It's Camel Racing, by the way. Yeah, Camel Racing. That's kind of important. (laughs) I mean, the hint was Camel Up, I guess. That wouldn't mean a Camel Racing to me. Okay. Well, you're betting on Camel Racing. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you can bet on who's going to win a round, you can bet on who's going to win the game, Mm -hmm. which camel, and you can bet on which camel's going to lose the game. Yeah. The entire game is based on luck. Liam insists there's strategy. There is an element of strategy. It's it's more luck than strategy, but there is an element. The element of strategy that Liam is referring to is that if on the player before you's turn, they roll the dice and the camels move into a position where one is obviously going to win, on your turn you go, that camel's obviously going to win, so you bet on it. Do you think it'd be different with more players? Uh, maybe, but even then, because even then, what what could happen is three people do their roles because yeah. there's not an obvious winner, and then the fourth person just goes, "Well, obviously that camel's won, so I'm going to pick that one to go first. Then it would just go the next person goes, "Yeah, he's right," takes the next bet on that camel. Thing. That's entirely possible, I guess. But that's that doesn't feel like it feels like the game. Like to be fair, the game's probably not aimed at people our age. I feel like it's more aimed at kids. Yeah, that would explain why Cat liked it so much. I didn't say that. You did. But yeah, that was yeah, you know. Yeah, so Camelot, we didn't, we unfortunately didn't have time to um, play Dead of Winter. We didn't. You, we were going to play it before I left, but Liam informed me it was an hour long game, and I had half an hour till my train. Sixty to one hundred and twenty minutes. Yeah, that's right. So not even it wasn't even like we might have time. <laughs> yeah, it was at the minimum you're going to be half an hour late, and that that doesn't include us probably having to like figure um, out. No, but like probably build stuff as well. Like you probably have to poke out the characters from the little cardboard inserts and stuff. Yeah, like a hundred percent. So, um, we also played some Dungeons and Dragons. We did. How was that for you? I'm looking. I'm I'm excited about it. Are we telling people that we yeah. recorded it? Yeah, oh, I'm setting this up it. so you can inform them. Yeah, we played Dungeons and Dragons, and we did a vi- a video recording of the session. I haven't checked yet to see like how it came out, so it could be that the quality is garbage. But if it isn't, um, we'll be putting that on our YouTube channel, along with our other episodes, which are going to go on there when I have time. Yes, we'll send out a link to the YouTube channel, because... We'll post it on our Facebook page, because I don't think enough people are using that. We'll also tweet it. No, we'll just post it on the no, Facebook page. No, well, that's page. ridiculous, because no one uses Facebook. Maybe now they will. Now they know there's exclusive no, content no, no, on that's there. that's not how it works, Liam. Yeah. Right, well, I'm going to tweet out the YouTube link. I want it to be like, if, if, you, if you're a true fan of Nerd on Nerd, then you'll know these things because you but will... But why would we try and limit ourselves to just our true fans? Why aren't we trying to get new people to do to join us as well? I am, with the Twitter stuff, but it's just That's a lot not, of yeah, fans. So, yeah, but so the YouTube channel is like a whole other thing of content that we're going to start doing. I like the idea that people find us on YouTube and have no idea the fact that we have any other presence elsewhere. And then one right, day they well, discover it and they're like, oh my god. situations where I'm just going to overrule you on your weird, let's try and hide the YouTube channel on our Facebook page that no one uses. But maybe they will start using it if they know it's... They won't, um, Liam, because it's Facebook. And just by default, no one is using that. Mark uses it. I apologise, Mark. You do use it. Yeah. And I do post links there for you. It's literally but just for him as well. It is, I know. That's why there's no other content on our Facebook page. No. Um, to be fair, there's not a whole lot of new content on our Twitter either. Whose fault's that? Yours. Oh, who came up with the fun idea to do... Uh, here you go, listeners. Here's another bit of what we did this weekend. We had a poll on our Twitter that some of you noticed. And yep. we know some of you noticed because we've, we've, I've got the results right here. Yes. We did a little poll. Yes. To find out. I don't remember how we got to this, Liam. I don't remember why this was a thing. But we were trying to figure out what the sexiest word is. Salami or sausage. Now just listen to the sounds of those words, right? Just listen, okay? Salami. That wasn't the question. Shh. You're trying to make it different than it is. Listen to the words, right? Salami or sausage. I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a cut. It's a. It's an open and shut case. Yeah, it 100 percent is because the results came back and it was 78 percent said sausage and 22 percent said salami. Don't understand it. There's there's so much more um, intoxication around the word salami than sausage. There's that exotic feel to salami. Sausage. Go down the pub and get a sausage. Yeah, you, you. I don't. I feel like you're. Re, I feel like you just 
it's your what the listeners are going to think is that you don't know the connotation of sausage. Penis. Yes. Yeah. Why can't you have a sexy Inherently, salami? Inherently, therefore, it is the sexier word because it has a sexual meaning. What about salami? No one says salami. Oh, I disagree. No one goes. It was a real salami party. I might start saying that. That's pretty good. It sounds sexier than sausage, doesn't it? No, no, it? no. Not because of that. Just because it sounds silly. It sounds sexier. It doesn't. I I think if you were to kind of dress up those two words. Salami would be the one to be in like the slinky lingerie, and sausage would be in like Lederhosen. overalls. S- sausage would be in lederhosen. It, yeah, it it wouldn't dress sexy, would it? Lederhosen can be sexy. Mm, not the way this sausage is wearing it. Well. Anyway, so yeah, um, the Twitter stuff is going well. We've got like nine hundred followers or something now. Are you one of them? If not, why not? Give us a follow, nerd on nerd on Twitter. If you haven't been following our Twitter, you've missed classics like Liam dropping a casserole and other things that have happened. <laughs> But that is my favourite one. Yeah. Um, so you had a good weekend then, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I did. I had an enjoyable weekend. You? Yeah, it's good. Um, and your train back was stress-free? Uh, yeah, I just watched episodes of The Flash. Cool. Well, normally when you get the train back, there's always like problems. This is the first time in the last, I think, three times I've been down to see you that on the way back there haven't been work you know, happening on the rails. Yeah. Well, that's good. I've, I've, I've done stuff like I've had to get trains... From Haven't to Guildford before. No, buses. Replacement bus services. Yeah. It's been a like, nightmare. It's been insane. It's a good job that seeing me is so good it makes it all worthwhile. That's why I do it like once every three months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but also, you know, so we can give our, our lovely listeners more top quality content. Yep. 